Hi, Chris Pritchard here from Pentest Partners. Today I'm going to highlight an issue with GoPro Studio application and its update mechanism. It appears that the GoPro Studio application is checking its version number of a standard HTTP connection, and if a new version is available, it then grabs the executable over that same HTTP connection. If we were in a position to hijack the version number request, we could feed back a version number of our own choice and hopefully get the victim to update their software with our booby trap version. This is bad. Let's take a look at this in action on my virtual machine. I'm going to use Wireshark to view the raw network traffic so that we can spot the version number check. So I'm going to fire at Wireshark and I'm going to start the capture process. This is the studio application and we can see as soon as it starts it checks for an update. And we can see here that there's an update available. We can also see here, if we follow the stream only, that this is a standard HTTP request. No encryption or no certificate checking to ensure the application is actually talking to the correct GoPro server. So I've set up a fake GoPro server and I've hijacked my DNS so that everyone on this network thinks that software.gopro.com is my server and hence request updates from mine instead of the real server. And as there's no certificate or encryption checking by the application, this is a feasible attack in a cafe or a hotel that provides Wi-Fi, for example. So I've now hijacked DNS and requests to software.gopro.com are being redirected to my server, which is feeding back an updated version as being available. As we can see in this screenshot, the original version that was available was 2.5.5.43. And magically, if we start up the application again, we can see a new version is available, and that is 2.5.5.444. This is my booby trap version, which if we download, looks like a legitimate software update. I've actually combined the genuine GoPro update with a Metasploit backdoor, which will connect back to my listening Metasploit server. From there, I have complete control over the victim's PC. Here is the installer, which in this case I'm going to cancel um, because it's not actually needed in this particular case. But in the background, my Metasploit shell has now connected, hopefully, to my listening server. Let's just check that that's there. Yep, and there is my session. I can now completely control um, the victim's PC.